Hello YouTube, this is Calc Programmer one and I'm going to be showing you a new little project that I've been working on. And as you can see, I can turn off my light with a remote. So what I wanted to do was re-implement whatever's in this remote with a microcontroller, plug it into my computer with USB, and then be able to control the outlet uh, from the internet using my phone. So these outlets are actually very good for this purpose. They use a 315 megahertz uh, serial transmitter uh, in the remote which communicates to the three uh, different outlet modules. So as you can see I've got three here. One for that light, one for that light, and then another for my little Christmas tree here. So what I have done is created this board that's hooked to my computer here and what it does is it has a 315 megahertz transmitter an at tiny 2313 microcontroller and a USB to serial uh, PL2303 prolific based this connects to my Linux home server and it serves up this web page here outlet switch control and which basically has 12 different on off buttons for channels A, B, C, and D of because they have four different sets of these outlets. So what I'm going to be taking a look at today is um, adjusting the code a bit to clean it up because right now uh, it's kind of intermittent sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and I think the timings on my code are a bit wrong so I'm going to show you how I reverse engineered the protocol from these remotes and then I'm going to adjust my code reprogram it to my board and see if it works so this is my setup for reverse engineering the protocol on these remotes uh, this is all four sets that I have channel A channel B both came from Walmart in 2012 channel C I bought today at Home Depot. It's an outdoor set. It's got a cord instead of just plugs directly into the wall. I'm using it for the outdoor Christmas lights. It has a black remote, but it's uh, channel C. And then channel D is another Walmart set I bought this year. They changed the design a little bit, but the protocol is still the same. Uh, this is channel D. And all of these are the same protocol, just different channels. So there are four bits in the protocol that represent channel A, B, C, or D. There are six bits for channel 1, 2, 3 outlets per set. And then there are six bits at the, at the beginning of the protocol that do not change. They are like the preamble bits. So to decode the protocol, what I'm using is my DS1052 uh, oscilloscope. This is actually modded to the 1102E version. Uh, but it doesn't matter for what we're doing. Uh, 50 megahertz is plenty. Uh, I have my power supply. Any power supply will do. This is uh, running at 5 volts. Then I have a 315 megahertz uh, little board serial receiver from SparkFun. This is the, I think, 435, I think, megahertz version. That's the 315 megahertz version. Uh, I already know these remotes are 315 but there are other units out there that use the 435 or I don't know if I have that number right but whatever this one is uh, spark fun sells both sets of both the receivers and the transmitters and on my board I have a transmitter so I'm going to power this on and I'm going to power this on I've got my voltage around 5 volts these things are pretty tolerant up to 12 volts I think but 5 is just fine for them and we will turn that on. So as you can see, with absolutely nothing hooked up or transmitting right now, I've got the oscilloscope channel 1 hooked up to the data out pin of the receiver. I've got an antenna, which is just a wire, hooked to the antenna pin. And then I've got plus 5 in ground. That's all I have hooked up to this. As you can see, with nothing going on, it just outputs random noise. It's random, it's whatever's in the air, 
and it's pretty much useless. But as you can see, as soon as I hold down a button, we get this regular serial data stream. And it's repetitive. This is the same block of data being transmitted over and over and over again. And it's the code for, say, button two, channel A, number two, off, or on, or, you know, channel D. They all have the same style of, of code, and the bits in here represent which channel, whether it's on or off, and which outlet. So what we're going to do is try and capture this by locking on to it. Stop, and then see if we've got the whole thing. Well, we want to have at least one whole block, and then we can zoom in on it. And now, as you'll see, it's just a pulse sequence, and what determines between a one and a zero is whether it's long or short. And if you don't know, I don't know which one corresponds to long or one or zero. So when I wrote them out down, I just called them S for short and L for long. And so we can look at the protocol by seeing short, long, long, short, long, short, 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 long, short, short, long, short. And I think that was channel C. I don't know what outlet. But the last four bits I remember were which channel it was. So this would like, it would be long, short, short, short for A, short, long, short, short for B, long, long, short, long, uh, short, short, long, short for C, and short, 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 long for D for the different remotes. Then the six bits, one, two, three, four, five, six bits here represent on and off for each of the three channels. And then I think the first six bits, one, two, three, four, five, six, are always fixed. They're the same exact pattern for all the buttons on all the remotes. So after figuring that out, uh, what, what you want to do is take a reading for each of the, what is it, 24 buttons we have here. Uh, 12 ons, 12 offs, record down all of their um, patterns and put them in like a table. Then you can see which bits stay the same and which bits change and that's how I figured out that the first six always stayed the same. The middle six um, were per outlet and they are the same across each remote. And then the last four bits only changed between remotes. That's how I figured out the protocol. So next thing is we want to re-implement the protocol on a microcontroller, which is pretty easy, but we need to figure out how long a short bit is and how long a long bit is. So what we want to do here is zoom in to say like this first pattern here, because we've got a short bit and a long bit. And a short bit has a high period and a low period, as does a high as a long bit has a high period and a short period so what we need to do is figure out the lengths of this 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 and this and to do that we're going to turn on our cursors or not measure cursors we want to go to manual and then we can start lining up on the bit times and measuring them. So as we can see for our short bit, this is the short bit, this is the long bit. For short bit, our bit time is 2.4 milliseconds. And the high period is 500 microseconds. and the low period is 1.9 milliseconds. So in the code,
that corresponds to here. So for generating a short bit, I put that in backwards. This should be 1900, and this should be 500. So what this does is it turns on the output pin, waits 500 microseconds, turns off the output pin, waits 1900 microseconds or 1.9 milliseconds. So now let's take a look at bit long. And I think these are the wrong values. They're not quite right. It's not exactly symmetrical with a short bit. So for the long bit, We still have a bit time of 2.4 milliseconds, but this is not symmetrical with that. So our high period is about 1.7 milliseconds, and our low period about 700 which adds up to 2.4 so if we put back to the code we put 700 and we put 1700 and that adds up to 2400 So I think this will work. So I have my board hooked up with my AVR ISP MK2 programmer. Um, I was having trouble using AVR Dude with this. So I'm going to use AVR Studio 4 on my Windows computer here. Um, copying the binary I've compiled over the network. Uh, yeah, here it is. And now I'm going to program it to the board. It is programmed. So let's see how it works. So this is the very primitive web interface I have so far. Uh, it's written in Python. It's very simple. And it just has 12 on-off buttons, as you can see. One, two, three, four, five, all the way down to 12. So let's see if these new timings work. We'll turn on lamp to it works. About lights number one. Works. How about number three? Number five. Okay, so I think these new timings are pretty good. Everything seems to be working great with them. So now I can control all the outlets from my phone, from wherever I am. Now how does this work? Well, computer over there is running a server. Right now it's uh, written in Python. It's running a web server on the LAN and uh, it serves up this web page with all the outlet switches and whenever a button's clicked it runs a command writes to the serial port which tells the board to send out the appropriate command to turn the lights on and off. Uh, I can access this page on my phone. I'm on 4G right now uh, so not connected to Wi-Fi uh, but I do have 
OpenVPN setup. So I am connected into my LAN via OpenVPN. Uh, this is the OpenVPN settings app. So wherever I am, I can connect into my LAN, connect to the computer, which is running this Outlet Controller page. And I need to make the buttons a little bit more user friendly. They're really tiny right now uh, because the Note 3 has such a big screen. Uh, but I'll go ahead and turn outlet number one off. That's these lamps here by pushing this button here. And as you can see, as you could have heard, it turned that light off. So let's do number two. Number two works. Number three. Number three works. So as you can see, wherever I am, I can now turn the lights on and off with my phone. And there you have it.